Welcome to Menopause Monday. So today's video, I'm actually going to be talking about vaginal dryness. It's something I get asked about quite a bit. And um, I think it's something that we can be a little bit embarrassed to talk about with our doctor, particularly if we actually have a male doctor. Um, I don't know about you. My first child was delivered, not delivered, but I had a male doctor for my first child. And I really wish I'd had a female one. So as, as far as menopausal symptoms go, it's one of those that can have a really profound impact on us. It's also one of those symptoms that can be the most uncomfortable. Um, it can have a knock on effect to our self confidence and also how that impacts on our intimate relationships. The stats are pretty varied with how many women are going to get vaginal dryness through the menopause. I've seen some studies that say 10 to 20 percent, others say between 50 and 60 percent. All I know is that a lot of ladies I talk to seem to have some kind of an issue with it. So I would say it's certainly higher than the 10 to 20 percent um, of ladies that struggle with vaginal atrophy as a whole. Um, so first of all, foremost, what actually causes vaginal atrophy or drying? As our estrogen levels fall, then what happens is that affects the mucous membranes in the body and it can have a negative effect on the vaginal tissue, which technically should be very elastic and strong. It becomes much thinner. Um, the elasticity can drop off and it can lead to a lot of pain, dryness, irritation and even bleeding. So, um, you know, if the, if the mucus levels drop, anywhere in the body, but specifically in the vagina, as we're talking about that right now, it can also have an effect on the, um, the level of healthy bacteria in our vagina, like our gut health. We have healthy bacteria within the digestive tract. We also have healthy bacteria throughout the vaginal area too. So, um, you know, when we're getting that thinning, mucous membranes dropping, lacking of, lack of estrogen, that has a neg negative effect, effect on us. Um, it can make us more prone to urinary, urinary tract infections um, and also uh, vaginal bacteria, bacteriosis. So first of all, what can we do? Well, avoid irritants. So watch what you're washing yourself with. If you have highly fragrant soaps and bubble baths and body washes, I suggest going something much more organic and much more natural. Um, an olive oil soap, for instance, is going to be a really good alternative for you. Um, heavily fragrant soaps and washes are just not going to help you at all. They're going to dry you out more. They're going to affect that, the sort of balance of the healthy bacteria. So go for something more organic and more natural. Uh, just use like a gentle, gentle wash of some sorts. I'm sure health food shops will be able to help you with something along those lines. Um, if you're still getting periods or you're perimenopausal, um, what, make sure if you're, you're using organic tampons or possibly even use something like the moon cup, which is going to reduce the, the risk of toxic shock. But it's also, you know, all these things have some chemicals in them. So if you make sure you're going for our organic tampons um, so that you're, 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 you're helping maintain that healthy gut, the healthy biome within the vagina itself. Um, be aware of the washing powder that you use. That can also have a really irritating effect. So, um, you know, it might be worth changing for something like Ecova that is much kinder to the skin. And make sure you have a really good rinse cycle on your washing machine. A lot of washing machines, they tend not to rinse things thoroughly. So avoid using fabric conditioner or fabric softener. Um, and also make sure that your washing machine's got a really good rinse cycle. Um, drink plenty of water. That is so important. As our estrogen levels fall, so does our ability, our body's ability to actually hydrate ourselves better. So all the mucous membranes are negatively affected. So yeah, that's why some people get dry eyes, we get dry skin, but the vagina is still a mucous membrane. So make sure that you're drinking sufficient water, um, avoid things like that are going to dehydrate you, like uh, caffeinated drinks, coffee, alcohol, fizzy drinks, quite a lot of those contain caffeine. Um, Sea buckthorn oil is, there are many studies out there and it's proven to help hydrate mucous membranes around the body on the whole, but specifically also vaginal dryness. So you take it orally, I would go and have a chat with your, um, the person who runs your health shop and see, you know, what sea buckthorn oil uh, supplements they have for you. It's been used for thousands of years in Chinese mm -hmm. medicine um, and is, is known these days to be, it's, it's used quite a lot in, uh, you know, anti-aging products, but it is very good for mucous membranes. Um, 
So make sure you you're you're sort of keeping well hydrated. Just also back to sort of the underwear issue. Make sure you're wearing natural products, things like cotton underwear. So um, you know when you you're using synthetic products, it just is a it's easier to get the the balance of the healthy and the net, the bad bacteria wrong so make sure you've you know got basically wear cotton undies um beware also of shop bought lubricants because a lot of those contain chemicals and while you are having this problem with the vaginal atrophy and the thinning make sure you're using something that's natural now you can use things like a coconut oil so you we cook mm -hmm. with it you can use it on your face you can use it on your skin we can also use it um, as a healthy lubricant and also vitamin e tablets so you know you get like the capsules just literally snip it and you can use vitamin e cream that will also you know it's, it's a healthy natural alternative there are um estrogen prescription creams that you can get those can be quite messy but they can also be quite effective however if you're already on hrt you might not want to add more estrogen into your body because it is absorbed into the bloodstream um, if you have had or you have breast cancer something like that that type of cancer thrives on an estrogen dominant um a body so you're not going to be wanting wanting to use it in that instance and also do not use it as a lubricant if you're using it as a treatment because um it is absorbed into the bloodstream and if you have a male partner he's not going to be wanting to have your estrogen shared with him um so if you're using it as a lub lubricant he's going to be absorbing estrogen which is probably not what he's going to want um as far as the, the vaginal bacteriosis goes, I can never say that word. Um, things, foods like uh, fermented foods, say sort of uh, sauerkraut, kombucha. I make my kombucha uh, every week. Um, it's really easy. I might even be running a free group on that, on how to make kombucha recipes. So if you want to be in part, involved with that, just drop me a message. But kimchi is a really, really, um, uh, you know, is, is a really healthy fermented food. Kefir. So this is, it's very high in nutrients, very high in probiotics, really, really beneficial for our digestion, um, our gut health. It helps us maintain a healthy commune of good bacteria all over the body. But Lactobacillus brevis is um, a type of lactic acid bacteria, and it's found in uh, milk products. It's also found in things like uh, fermented foods, such as, as pickles, um, it's it essentially creates a byproduct called hydrogen peroxide and that is what helps to kill off the unfriendly bacteria in fact uh, vaginal bacteriosis so um make sure you're getting that lactobacillus brevis comes in a lot of fermented foods like i said also uh, kefir things like that is already part and parcel of that drink apple cider vinegar so in the morning i have a pint of water i have a good dash of um, organic raw make sure it's raw not pasteurized apple cider vinegar and often in the afternoon or the evening again i have it's a decent sized teaspoon it's probably two teaspoons actually but i have that in a pint of water because it helps to keep healthy bacteria um, maximize and helps to reduce the negative bacteria around our body. Um, oregano, oregano oil and grapefruit seed oil also kill off the persistent bacteria associated with uh, vaginal bacteriosis. So again, um, it's something you can get from your health food store. You do take it orally. So um, yeah, it does this, you know, a lot of our symptoms as we go beyond the menopause get better. I've not read anything to suggest that vaginal atrophy actually improves after menopause. Doesn't mean to say it won't, but I've not read anything as yet. Um, so what I would suggest is try the tips that I've shared today. Um, if you have an ongoing problem, do talk to your healthcare provider because it's really important that you feel confident in yourself, that it's not something that you're suffering with. It does have, it can have such a negative impact on our relationships and just how we feel about ourselves. So, you know, do, don't keep sweeping it under the rug, go and get some help for it. If it's something that's having a negative impact on your life and you've already tried the things that I've suggested in today's uh, Menopause Monday. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you did, please. Um, if you've had used any tips that I've not shared today, 
that have really worked for you or indeed if you you know if one of the tips I mentioned today you use and it made a massive difference to you please let me know so then I can feed it back to people that I know have got this issue I won't name you can stay completely anonymous but it'd be really helpful to you know to know how things work for you um and yeah I hope you have a great rest of your week make it an epic one and uh, catch you soon <laughs>